Hey there, it's Amelia. I'm excited to bring you this particular video packed with secret tricks to make you an Excel expert. So let's get started. So for the first trick, I'd like to show you a way to switch between your Excel workbooks. Now, uh, I'm going to show you actually two ways, but one way you can switch between your workbooks is along the bottom of your uh, computer screen where all your icons are. If I click on my Excel icon at the bottom there, I could see all my different workbooks that I have open. And if I hover over them, I can see which ones are open and then I can just click to switch over to the one I want. But what I really want to show you is a really neat trick with the keyboard. So I like to use Alt Tab to switch between windows. The only problem with Alt Tab is it will switch between all of your windows, not just your Excel workbooks. So instead of Alt Tab, try using Control Tab. So you want to hold down the Control key and then just tap the Tab key and it will switch only between your Excel workbooks. So that's the first trick. Next, I'd like to show you how to add a carriage return inside a cell. So say you are typing inside of a cell and the information is fitting nicely, but you want to separate it and you need a way to push the information down just like you would in like a word processor like Microsoft Word. So I'm going to go ahead and double click in the cell to edit. You can also hit F2. And notice that I have two sentences here and I'd like to push the second sentence down. So let me go ahead and double click to get the cursor there. And all you have to do is hold down the Alt key and tap Enter. And if I do it again, I can insert another hard return. And I'm just going to hit Delete to take that one space out. And so that's all there is to it to add a carriage return inside of a cell. So for the third trick, I'd like to show you how to wrap text within a cell. So if you don't make any changes to any formatting and you just keep typing, what's going to happen is if there's too much information that would fit inside of a cell, it's going to overflow into the next cell. Now, if there is something that you already typed in the next cell, like for instance, let's say you have the name of a person here, it's going to cut off the information as much as can fit inside that cell. And say you wanted to maybe adjust your worksheet, maybe insert another column and you need even more space and you need to make this column even shorter. You need a way to be able to wrap the text within the cell. Just right click on the particular cell, select Format Cells, and then from the Alignment tab, just click Wrap Text. That particular cell um, now has a word wrap turned on and if I want to apply it to the whole column, right click on the column letter and then select format cells, click wrap text and click OK. And now the whole column is set up to wrap the text. Okay, so next I'd like to show you how to enter literals in a cell. And what I mean by a literal, any character other than your typical number or alphabetic character that you'd like to enter in sometimes causes an error in Excel. If I started typing and used a mathematical operator like a plus and then I typed some text and tried to accept that if I press enter, Excel doesn't understand that I want to just type a mixture of a mathematical operator and alphabetic text and it thinks I want to do something else to the cell and it gives me this error uh, name question mark. To fix that, what you can do is you could put an apostrophe at the beginning of the cell and that will remedy that. And when I click again on the cell, you'll see that the apostrophe does not show in the cell. It will just show in the formula bar. And I'll show you another example. Let's say I want to start with an equal sign and I just put in a series of characters and I enter that. And when I do, um, you'll see this error message. So Excel will not understand, again, if you press equals, it expects you to type a formula in. And if it detects incorrect syntax in a formula, then you'll probably get an error message that looks something like this. Again, to remedy it, I'm just going to click OK. What you can do is just enter an apostrophe and press Enter. And that will tell Excel that you're entering a series of characters that are just literals. And you'll see, again, you'll see the apostrophe in the formula bar, but you will not see the apostrophe in the cell. Now, what you want to make sure you do is you don't want to put the apostrophe in any numeric data that's being calculated in a formula because then it will not calculate properly.
For the fifth trick, I'd like to show you a nifty way to combine or arrange text from different cells using the ampersands. So say you had a large worksheet with a lot of information maybe imported from a system or something where the information is split up into different cells and you need to combine the words or possibly proper names together in another cell without having to retype everything. So what you can do is you can use an ampersand and I'm going to zoom in on the formula here so you could see it better. So in this particular cell, I already have the formula set up here. What you would do is start with an equal sign, reference each cell. So I have B2 and put an ampersand. And in this case, because I want a space between each word, I have B2 ampersand space in quotes, ampersand C2 and another ampersand, a space, another ampersand and D2. So you can uh, join the different words together and in this case put a space and I'm going to copy that down and copies and translates to the other cells. Now you can also do it with numbers and maybe you don't need spaces so in this case it's very easy in this formula it's just equals B6 ampersand C6 ampersand D6 and it would string all the numbers together and you can also put other characters in between like for instance if you need a dash to uh, join numbers together which looks something like a social security number the syntax would be equals B8 for example ampersand and then you would put a dash in quotes and so on and so forth so that's one way to join text together. Now you can also use the concatenate function, which I have in another video for advanced functions. So next I'd like to show you conditional formatting with color. Let's say that you want to show particular cells, uh, maybe cells with a containing a value lower than one and shade them in red. The way you would do this is with conditional formatting and I'm going to first select all the cells in the range and if once you have your range of cells selected from the home tab in the styles group click conditional formatting and then select new rule and in the new formatting rule dialog box select format only cells that contain and then in the edit the rule description section select cell value which is already here and I want to say less than one and in the preview section, I'm going to click format. Then I want to select how I would like the cell to look if the cell contains that particular value. So next I'm going to click fill and I'm going to select color red and click OK. And I click OK once more. Let me just click off of the range and you could see that every cell that contains a value less than one is now shaded in red. So next I'm going to show you a different kind of conditional formatting with if then. So in this example, I have a series of numbers and let's say you're tracking a budget and if the value in the cell is greater than one, for example, you want the word profit to show in the next cell. Otherwise you want to show the word okay. So the way you would do this is I'm going to go ahead and click in the next cell and this would be a formula. I'm going to start with the equal sign and then say if and then put left parentheses and then I'm going to click in the cell that I'm referencing, which is B2, is greater than 1, comma. Then I use a double quote to specify what I want to see in the cell, which in this case is the word profit, and my double quote, comma. Otherwise, I want to see the word OK, which I put in double quotes, and my double quotes, my right parentheses, and press Enter. OK, so now if I copy that down, Let's see how it works. Excellent. So if the cell has a value greater than one, the word profit shows, otherwise it shows the word okay. For the next trick, I'd like to show you how to convert to upper or lower case. So in Microsoft Word, there's a couple ways you can easily change convert case, but in Excel, there is a function that you can use to switch from lower to upper or vice versa. One caveat is that you do have to use a different column, but say for example, in this uh, worksheet, you already typed all the information in column B here and you really need it to be in caps. Well, what you can do is I'll show you a function where you can convert it to capital letters. And then what you can do is then you can hide the 
uh, original column, but you would still need to keep it in your worksheet uh, because it's referencing those cells. So what you would do is in the next cell over, you would start a formula with your equals and you would type upper, for example, left parentheses, click to select the cell to reference, and then your right parentheses, press enter, and voila. Now everything is converted to uppercase. I went ahead and carried it over into the other cells, but that's a quick way to convert the case. So next I'd like to show you how to name a cell. So for instance, this particular worksheet has a commission percent in B4. And if you are familiar with the absolute versus the relative cell addressing, this particular formula uses the absolute addressing. So in other words, in this particular formula, B4 and only B4 is referenced in the cell and the dollar signs uh, automatically say that I always want to absolutely reference that cell. But there's another way to do this. You could name that cell and then reference that particular cell name in the formula and then it would also be absolute. So the way I would do that is I would click on B4 and then I can click in this name box up here on the upper left. And then I could just type in the name of my cell and I could use uh, upper lowercase cannot start with a number and also no spaces. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit enter. And now this particular cell is named commission. So what I could do is in here, instead of using before, I could put the cell name in here and there is a way to see all the cell names. You can press F3 and see a list like this and pick it this way and click OK. Or what you can do is you could just start typing the cell name in. For instance, let me just remove that. I could just start typing the letter C and that will also display names of cells, etc. And in here you'll see commission. And I click commission and that would be another way for me to insert the particular cell reference in that function. And then I can just copy that down and you'll see that the numbers did not change because even though the formula changed, when I used the cell name in the function, it remained absolute and the rest of the cells are reflected. And lastly, I'd like to point out some really cool function key shortcuts. There are commands with every single function key from F1 to F12. And I don't know that you would call all of them tricks, but there is one, the last one I'm going to show you, which is truly a trick. I'd like to point out four function keys that are my favorites. Uh, first of all, the F1. So F1 equals help. And you could press F1 anytime to get help. And you can just be anywhere and just press F1. And then what happens is the help pane will pop up on the right side of your screen. And then you could just type whatever you need and get the help that quick. Okay, the next function key that I want to point out is F2. And F2 is to edit a cell. And sometimes I do tend to double click and that's one way you can edit a cell. Or the other way is to just hit the F2 key and that will place your cursor quickly at the end of the cell. Okay, and next I want to point out F5. F5 is the go-to. You can press F5 to navigate to a particular cell in your worksheet, particularly if you have like a large worksheet and maybe you've named some cells. And if you have, the names of the cells would appear in this list and then you can jump to that particular cell or you can put in a cell reference. So for instance, if I wanna jump down to say um, B40, I would put in that cell reference and click okay and it would jump down to that particular cell. And finally, I wanna show you my favorite function key, which honestly a very good trick is, let's say you wanted to create a quick chart. What you can do is select your range and let me go ahead and pick this information. And then literally it is one function key, F11. Drum roll please. Instantly you have a chart instantly. Now you don't have the flexibility of selecting your chart before you hit F1. It's always this kind of chart, but um, you can always go up and, you know, pick a style, etc. That's just a very quick way to create a chart. Okay, well, that's it for today's video. I hope you found this video helpful. If you like this video, please click like. If you like my channel, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.